So let me start by asking Professor Ferguson a question. Judge Urbina gave us some historical context, but I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about why this right to a trial by jury is among the Bill of Rights' most important guarantees. Why do you think our founding fathers made juries, decided to make juries an integral part of the justice system, and why was it a compelled service, so much so that sometimes the resources of the marshal service or the sheriff's department are utilized to arrest people and to bring them in to do this duty? I'd be happy to, and I thank ACS for this uh, wonderful opportunity. I'd note, actually, the traditional history was, even in the time of the founding, when people skipped jury service, they would, the equivalent of marshals would be sent out and they'd be fined in pounds of tobacco um, for failing to, failing to show up for their jury summons. So it's an ancient tradition, uh, an unfortunate one. Um, but I'd like to speak here today both as a former trial attorney, where I learned from and met lots of jurors and studied from them and with them, and also an academic who sort of looked at juries in America. And to understand the idea, which is sort of the fundamental part of this discussion of exclusion and engagement, you have to understand a little bit of American history. Um, symbolically and literally, the jury was part of America before there ever was an America. The right to a jury trial came on those same boats to the Jamestown colony in 1607. And in the Jamestown charter, there was a right to a jury. In each of the 13 colonies, independently, there was a right to a jury trial. In fact, the British attempt to strip American juries of the ability to try criminal and maritime cases was one of the reasons why there was the War of Independence. Thomas Jefferson in the Declaration of Independence wrote about the deprive, deprivation of jury trials. It's right there in the Declaration of Independence, and it's there, as Judge Urbina said, in the Constitution, or, judge, or uh, as, as we said in the introduction, in the Constitution. It is the only right, not only written in the actual text of the Constitution, but in the Bill of Rights. If you look at the Sixth Amendment right to a jury trial for criminal cases, the Seventh Amendment right to a jury for civil cases, the Fifth Amendment right to a grand jury, you have three out of the first 10 amendments. Then if you understand that the First Amendment right against prior restraints and the Fourth Amendment right against unreasonable searches and seizures, which were effectuated by a jury trial, means that half the Bill of Rights, half of our fundamental Bill of Rights was about the right to a trial, a right to a jury trial. And you say, why? It's not just history. It's about something more fundamental. It's about the fact that it connected a great American ideal of democracy, of liberty, and self-government. And this ideal of civic participation, the idea of ordinary citizens coming to decide things just like they came to vote for their legislatures was fundamental to the founders. In each branch of government, there is this requirement of participation, this re requirement of engagement. It was an insight that was recognized by the Federalists who were arguing for the Federal Constitution, as well as the Anti-Federalists who didn't necessarily and were scared of a federal government. It was recognized by observers in the first generation, like Alexis de Tocqueville, who said that the jury trial, the jury experience, is a place, a public school, where ordinary citizens, like all of you, come to learn what it means to be an American, what it means to be a democratic citizen. And yet, as the other part of this discussion, is that despite a push for engagement, despite a push for participation, the institution itself was starkly exclusionary. Exclusion of women was not, of injury service was not formally ended until 1975, within my lifetime. Exclusion of African Americans was formally ended a century earlier, but in practice continued for decades afterwards, and I think as we'll hear later, continues in other forms to this day. And it is no surprise that as society moved to democratize the jury away from white, male, property-owning men to a larger inclusion of women and minorities, that the push for equality began with juries. But before and after the 19th Amendment, the push for, jury, for women to be in jury service was part of the progress. The legal cases that the NAACP Legal Defense Fund brought, fund brought that began in the South as a precursor to the Civil Rights Movement were focused on juries. The great civil rights pioneer Charles Hamilton Houston won his first case in the, in the Supreme Court based on a jury exclusion case. And yet, as we heard, when people received that summons in the mail, do they think about Thomas Jefferson? No. Do they think about the Constitution? No. They think, why me? 
why now? I'm too busy. I have something else to do. And so I ask that as we sit and talk about this idea of jury engagement and inclusion, we talk about how we can engage jurors, ordinary citizens, into the principles of the Constitution.